Good evening. Um, we're here tonight at 6.30 on August 7th for the regularly scheduled select board meeting. First order of business would be approving the minutes from our last meeting. So moved. Okay. I got a motion to approve the minutes from last meeting. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Second. Uh, second. No, second. Oh, I can second it? Okay. Thank yeah, so I'll second that. Um, there's no discussion, so all those in favor, aye. Aye. Two nothing. Thank you. All right, so first order of business will be the, we're not doing the wire inspection fees tonight, correct? Right. Yeah, all right. So it'll be the appointment of election workers. Yes, so uh, the town clerk gave us a list uh, in accordance with Mass General Laws Chapter 54, Section 12, election officers in towns um, to serve from September 1st, 2023 to August 31st, 2024. Uh, the election officers for Democrats would be Barbara Howie, Kimberly Wisseman, Mary Gunderson, Christine Drake, Ronald Howie, Stana Wheeler, and Michelle Burgess. The Republicans, Deborah Bennett, William Sillen, Pam Parsons, Donna McKemmy. Unenrolled, Carol Cushai, Jennifer Uncles. Out of town, Olivia Leone, Catherine Umstadt, and Margaret Nardowitz. And high school student, McCabry Burgess. That was probably the easiest list of names I've read <laughs> since starting here. Yeah, they're, they're yeah, the only one that could have tricked you up your hat because you, you knew her from her previous job, Margaret. Yeah. Exactly. All right, so do I hear the motion to make the appointments as listed? Go. Thank you. Um, and I'll second that. Um, with the understanding that I am related to Christine Drake, but there is what I believe no conflict with me doing this. Um, so I will second it under those circumstances. Any discussion? No. All right. All those in favor of accepting this as presented? Aye. Aye. So, two zero. Thank you. And just for the public, I mean, your mom has been doing elections long before you were a Long select before woman. I was a selectman, yeah. So she or was, select person. It's, it's not like she would be newly appointed. Yeah, she's, she's not a newly position. appointed person. She's been doing this for years and years. Okay. Thank you. All right. Next order of business is to award gas and diesel fuel bids. Yes, so annually we go out to bid for gas and diesel for fire and highway and police vehicles. Um, this year, the low bids were both um, from Burke Energy, um, both for diesel and for gasoline. Um, and the recommendation of the highway superintendent is to go with the variable rate, which is, um, 2.95 uh, cents over the Springfield rack average price for diesel and 3.45 cents, excuse me, 0.345 cents over the Springfield rack average price for gas. So are these, is this the same companies we've dealt with in the past? Um, yes, I don't think that we are currently with Burke. I think that it was uh, Kiris and Sandry. Um, but yeah. We have dealt we with have them in the yeah. past yeah. and no problems yeah. and it's been fine. Okay, I will entertain a motion to. Motion to award to Burke Energy. Okay. For the fuel. I will I second that. For I'll second that. Um, any discussion? Okay, hearing no discussion, 
All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Two zero. Thank you. All right, so next order of business is the appointment of Sue Cassidy to the Sunderland Cultural Council. Yes, there was a vacancy in the Sunderland Cultural Council. Uh, Ms. Cassidy expressed interest, uh, and the chair of the Cultural Council um, uh, supported her, her candidacy. So passing that along. Okay. So I will entertain a motion. Motion to approve appointment of Sue Cassidy to the Sunderland Cultural Council. Okay, I'll second that. Any discussion? So, hearing no discussion, we'll vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Two zero, Jeff. Thank you. Yeah, moving right through this. So, <laughs> end of year transfer requests. Yep. So, every year, um, because we aren't perfect, we wind up with some accounts in deficit and some in surplus. Uh, and annually we go through that and sort of even things out where we overspent a little bit and where we saved a little bit just so that everything balances. Um, we've been talking about our, our accounting issues <laughs> over the last year. So this list is a little bit longer than it has been in the past, um, but Again, it's not appropriating any new money. It's nothing like that. It's just shifting from uh, one place to another. Last week, the Finance Committee reviewed and approved the year-end transfers. Um, and so once the Select Board approves, the accountants would make those transfers and then start closing out the uh, fiscal year 23. Any questions is about it, is it a net zero kind of thing? Like yes, exactly. Okay. Yep. And then this spreadsheet that we have, those are just right. Okay, so the left side, and it's going to be boring for anyone who can't mm -hmm. see at home, yeah. but um, is the account in deficit, the name, the account number, the account name, the amount that it's in deficit, and then the next three columns are the amount are basically, that's not mirrored, how much is being covered the, from which account number and then the, that account name. Okay. So if you, m most of the first section, it's sort of one account in deficit, one in surplus. Sometimes if the deficit is big enough, you need to cover by with multiple accounts. Yep. So you'll see later in the spreadsheet, that's why there are some um, two, two surplus accounts covering okay. for one deficit. All right, I will entertain a motion to um, accept these year-end transfers as presented. So moved. All right, I'll second that. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, we'll vote on it. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Two zero. Thank you. Okay. Next, we've got the HVAC at the public safety complex. Saving the best for last, yes. So, uh, annual town meeting appropriated $40,000 um, to begin designing a replacement HVAC system for the public safety complex, which has had issues for at least the last four years having comfortable temperatures. Um, as part of that process, we got a grant to do the load calculation for the building, which we got done in February, and then we had been in discussions with a company to help us design and tell us what we need to be thinking about. And um, recently they came back to us and said, nope. <laughs> we're not, we said, what do you mean no? We're, they said, no, we're not gonna be doing this. So, um, it. I think at this point it would take at least a year to design and construct a uh, replacement HVAC system. The fire and police personnel who are in that building constantly um, have been putting up with uncomfortable temperatures for a, a number of years and um, 
while I think that ideally <laughs> we would replace the whole thing and, and find something more efficient, uh, um, right now I think that we need to provide a, a temperate climate for, for the, the employees there. So um, we did get a quote to do a repair and it would replace the internal components, um, new, so originally the idea had been, hey, our, the issue is really with the controlling system, let's get rid of all the computerized stuff, let's just have a, therm, a couple thermostats that we can control. So since we're not doing that, we would have a new PC, it would be a different software, it wouldn't be Siemens, um, I think it was C, uh, Schneider Electric, that's what it is. Um, they would replace the programmable controllers. They would check everything in the system, replace anything that needs to be replaced, um, leave everything that doesn't. So my question to them was, okay, well, what happens if something you don't replace breaks? Can we just replace that one thing or are we gonna wind up spending you know, $200,000 anyway? Um, and they said, no, everything that we're gonna leave in can be replaced one by one. It shouldn't be an issue. Um, it comes with a 12 month warranty. So at least we know for one hot season and one cold season, we will, if there's an issue, they'll come back and fix it. Um, but the idea is this would at least provide us um, the runway we need to design a system and, and apply for grants and things. Not ideal, but I also don't, I, I was hopeful that, that at least we would ha have a system where we, you could have heat in the winter and AC in the summer enough to, to make it comfortable. Um, we don't have that, and I don't think we can go into the winter season without that. So I am recommending that instead of spending the $40,000 to design a new system, um, we, we uh, fix the existing system, it would be about $30,000, um, and I think they could get it done in the August, September time frame. Okay, I mean, how, how, I mean, how long could this fix last? Is it just seen as a Band-Aid, or is it something that could last three years, or, you know, who, do we know? So the building's <laughs> 20 plus years old. Yeah. Um, it's. I believe it has the original equipment. So yeah, if the condenser goes, yeah. I mean, then the AC, you need to, you know, that's a pretty expensive thing. Um, but that's, I think that that's the idea is that at, this should last us at least five years. And oh, five, okay. Yeah, and, okay. and if, you know, if something small breaks a damper, they can replace it for a couple hundred bucks. And okay. So, I, 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 I think it's the right thing to do, but I'm nervous because I know that the town has tried this before. They've tried to fix the system. I don't know that they've tried to fix it since we left Siemens. Yeah. Um, but I, I, Jamrog is, is the, the group that's been working um, on the system, doing repairs. They're the most familiar and they had the, the lowest um, price proposal. So I'm, I'm confident that they at least know what they're dealing with. So this problem cannot really be solved with portable air conditioning, portable heating to get us through until that design phase and installation phase is over. Uh, I don't, I think that there are security concerns with yep. it being a public safety complex that make that not a feasible solution. Yep. And that's absolutely okay. understandable. It seems, I mean, it's going to take a, we think it's going to take, even if we wanted to do a design, it's going to take time and they need a comfortable building. So, I mean, yeah. really it's the right choice, I think. Yeah. Oh yeah, it is. You know, and especially with portable systems not being a secure option. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'll entertain a motion to go the route of... Uh, um, repairs and we'll table the design until yep. you know, a more okay. appropriate time for it. So moved. 
All right, I'll second that. And any discussion? Hearing no discussion, we'll vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Two zero. Thank you. All right, old business. Select board updates. You got anything, I've getting, Dan? I'll get something soon, but I'm still waiting, so next time maybe. <laughs> I haven't had anything in the last couple of weeks either. So, I've got nothing. How about town administrator updates? Um, just a, a couple of things. The uh, I mentioned the issue with the restrooms in the park. The state... Um, Plumbing board has granted us a variance to allow our gender neutral restrooms with both a urinal and a toilet. So once we get the official letter from them, um, our inspectors will sign off on the permit and we'll be able to enjoy those restrooms, which is great. Um, on September 9th, the women's club is gonna be having a tag sale. They had planned it the same day as the book sale, um, but postponed so that's going to be um, at Riverside Park there's also some soccer games going on so we're going to arrange it so that it doesn't interfere um, but I wanted to mention that and then um, <clears throat> oh the boat ramp has been closed and is open as of this morning um, so people can use that again. However, the kayak lending program is gonna remain suspended until the water levels have, have gone down to a more reasonable level. And then the last thing is I just wanted to mention that I've been meeting with um, OpenGov, which provides a budgeting software solution. Um, after meeting with the finance committee last week, one of the things they'd like to do is improve the information that we give departments like ahead of time so that they can rather than them filling out okay what was my budget last year how much did i spend we give them all that information um, and this software would do a lot of it and provide a more open facing thing uh, for the public to see so it would be a lot smoother process it would avoid errors um, I, I don't know that it makes sense for Sunderland right now. I think it would be a great tool to have, but it's it costs about six thousand dollars a year for operating budget and about six thousand a year for capital. Um, they also have modules for like creating a budget book. So you know after you do the budget process, click a button and you have your book for town meeting folks. Um, so I, I I see some benefits, but I I think that. Between the changes we're making with accounting right now, um, I don't know that this is the right year to make that change, but I do see a lot of value in it. So I wanted to mention it, um, and I'll, I'll mention it to the finance committee when they meet again um, as a potential thing. But I just I think it's a little a little expensive um, for the benefit right now. Okay. So are there multiple different vendors that? have this type of software or is there really only one that's there are used there are a few um it, one of and i haven't checked out all of them i think uh so open gov there's a group that used that came out of code for america and i'm blanking on the name but there there are several and yeah, we can look at, at what the other options are and what the expenses are. And well, then, when we get closer to yeah, thinking it's the right time to move towards something like that. I mean, yeah. I just wasn't sure if this was really the only vendor. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't think that they are the only vendor, but I think that they are probably the most well-known. Yeah. yeah. Um, and again, it's not, it's not specific about this vendor. It's just... It eliminates, you know, transcription errors. Mm -hmm. Department head sends me a spreadsheet. I type it in wrong. That type of thing. Yeah. Um, but twelve thousand dollars, <laughs> I can double check my work. Too. Yeah. So I, yeah, that that and was is all. Is it I had. a single user license type thing, or is it something that, you know, that? Again, I'm not. I haven't seen it. Haven't been in any of the discussions, but. 
is it something like that George could input his own stuff and everyone could input their own stuff and it's a multi-user license versus yep. and a then, single user and you know if the select board of the finance committee was meeting and they said you know highway department you need to cut your budget by 10 percent in the meeting i could there's a whole workflow so i could say george cut your budget by 10 percent he would get an alert through the system then he would be able to update it or you know so it's um kind of nice hmm. all in one place mm -hmm. a little more streamlined yes exactly and it's probably best to wait until all of our accounting is settled yeah we're gonna get that in a better yeah. spit in a better place yep and i think we we're hopefully in a better place we are in a better place hopefully <laughs> we're gonna get confirmation um i'm speaking with our auditors and our accountants on hopefully wednesday um just to introduce them have the accountants tell the auditors where we are and make sure that we have a, a good plan for how to move forward with clean books Next meeting, I should have an update. Good. All right. Sounds like that was a good move so far. Yeah. So if that's it, does anyone have anything else that hasn't been covered by any of us? All right. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I will second that. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Two zero. And you can call us out at 652.